I'm back. And we're gonna end this journey for now. Of course, I will do Tupac later, maybe this year, otherwise next year. But there's so many genres and songs I have to do. And there's so many requests already, hundreds of them. But today, this was asked for an interview with Tupac. Um, I'm not a threat to you unless you are a threat to me, he says here. So let's go into Tupac. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. And without further ado, the interview. I trip off because it happens out of nothing. It just goes, you know, everybody just be screaming and acting. And I just trip. I, I get uncomfortable. And I, it's like it's like um, similar to a deer being caught in the, in the headlights. I just freeze, you know, and I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should um, be what they want me to be or if I should make them hate me so they can stop. You know, like say something mean so they can just stop. But I, I'm often I'm just like caught in the middle of it because it's, it's you can't. I mean, no one can do that. Police can't do that. They can't stand in front of all those people and control them with a gun and mace and all that. So me with just words, it's like a, um, a battle to find the right words to say at the right time. I'm, I'm curious, when you, when you think about the idea that you do have that kind of control over so many people, uh, in, in one sense, the whole idea of being a role model comes up in the imagery. And a lot of people who know you, and I talked to them beforehand, suggested that, hey, you know, when you meet him, he's going to be something entirely different than you imagine, hmm. and what the media is portraying him. What about that idea that that you have been portrayed? And sometimes, I mean, to be honest, you like the portrayal of you just hard, That's thug. Right. That's right. Don't step on me. That's right. You're in trouble. That's right. Yet there's another side to you too. Mm -hmm. What about that idea that you've got to be able to figure out where you're going? Um. To me, it's like, um, it is my sensitive side that, um, that likes to blow up the hard side. Because if my, if, I can, if my image or my reputation can stop a confrontation before it happens, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? I know how it is day to day. It's a constant um, man ego check going on in this street, in this world. So part of that is just like, you know, that's my, that's my, my resume. But as far as the media, they look at it as something different. They don't care about my resume. They don't care about me not getting in trouble. It's just another story, you know, and it's, it's a real story. They don't have to pay for it, and they're going to milk it for all it's worth. As far as people, they want me, when they first see me, to humble myself. They want me to be like this and da-da-da just because they're scared of me. But I don't feel like that's my job, to humble myself, to show you that I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat unless you're a threat to me. You know what I'm saying? So when people say, when you meet Pop, He's different than he is because when somebody one-on-one, -on -one, anybody one-on-one, -on -one, I believe honestly that I can talk. I believe that I have the ability to reason, I have logic, I have compassion, I have understanding. If we talk, there's no problems. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what happens. People use what they heard in the media and that's how they come at me. And mm -hmm. then, you know, we got a clash. One of the things that you read in the media is that you're angry, that you personify your generation, that you just got some angry folks out there and you're one of them. I'll put it to you. Are you angry? Are you angry with what you see society is about? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm extremely angry, confused. You know, um, a lot of the times that I sat up in court, I couldn't defend myself. You know what I'm saying? And it was. It wasn't like the things they were saying about me were beyond my comprehension, or um, the things that I could say weren't going to help my case. But because I mean, I was. It's like being exiled. You know, from from society, and that's how I feel. And this whole, um, the anger comes from, I'm tired of waiting for my past to get into society. All I ever wanted to do was make um, me and everybody around me feel more comfortable about where we were. You know what I'm saying? About the places that we stay. Where we, this is our home base. Let's build it up. Let's be happy about where we come from. You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to assimilate and um, get a pass key to where they at. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that everything needs to be separate, but we got to find pride in ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and once you get the pride, like, damn near two seconds after the pride comes anger from being held like that for so long and to be made to go through those changes, you get mad. You know what I'm saying? As soon as, I believe, as soon as any black man receives his first three checks, he starts getting mad. Because it's not about the necessity of having to have a job and having to pay and having to do that. You don't care no more about the smiles and the, you know, yes, my son, because you done got paid. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like you want to save money. You want to help other people. When you see how, how far it is, how far you have to go to help anybody mm -hmm. in your neighborhood. It's set up for me when I get paid for me to exit the ghetto. 
You know what I'm saying? The only reason I've had these problems is because I haven't left yet. And these problems don't come from a white man. It comes from just society, the problems that we have. Let me put this to you. A lot of people tell me. He is uh, good with words, let's give him that. And he's very charismatic as well, too. Um, the interview, on the other hand, looks so emotionless. Um, I have no clue who that is, but I don't know. I don't find him very sympathetic at the moment. And maybe it's a weird reference that I get. and Maybe it's a weird way of comparison, but... I did see a little piece, a snippet of the Kanye interview, and he must have been very influenced by Tupac because there are some similarities, and he's good with words too. But he is, I actually, of course, I cannot condone the fuck part, but I do get him, and not because I cannot even imagine to begin to feel where he's coming from. I know that I am privileged either if I wanted to or not, but I do get him that he did what he did because he thought that it was the right thing to do and that he felt that he had to do it. And I do feel his pain. It's kind of nice to see this, well, after like 25 years and also very sad because if you understand that this interview has been recorded I think in 94 and well he must have been 23 at the time and only after this two years later he got killed that is so sad if you look at it now he was so full of ideas he was so full of life it's a shame it's just a shame but look at the interviewer I I don't know his whole attitude his body language I don't know tell me do I get this wrong or is he still around is he still an interviewer because well it, it to me it does seem that he doesn't like his job that much Tupac is for the most part a nice guy this old thug thing hype hmm. good for record sales mm -hmm. uh, helps him identify with the young people who are out there and angry who would maybe label him a sellout like they did Hammer if he didn't Ooh. have that hard mm -hmm. side. What about that? First of all, nobody could call me a sellout. I'm not, I'm not going for that. I'm not even in that. I'm not, I'm not looking for approval from the black community because we don't give approval. You know, we don't really do nothing but exist. So it's not like I'm, black people could tell me, you a sellout or you true blue, you know what I'm saying? It's not that, I'm not even caught up in that. But um, I can see that, you know what I'm saying? The one thing we do have in common as black people is we share that poverty. So the thug side is more closer to the poverty than me being rich. You know, how can I come to any community center, you know what I'm saying, sporting a, a Rolex presidential, mm. all these diamonds and be like, look, we, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> gotta, gotta. <laughs> but now, when I say we, they know what I mean. I'm not saying, like, I live in this neighborhood and nothing, but I'm a thug, and they thugs. They can relate to it. I don't even have to say that, you know what I'm saying? When I come, I don't have to say I'm real. They already know that, you know what I'm saying? From, from me, from me being me, from not pushing the thugness, but I know from the business that everybody in this business is always whispering in your ear about what you can't say, what you can't do, what you can't wear in this world and in this world. It's two worlds, a white world and a black world. All I did was stand in the middle, you know what I'm saying, and, and say I'm, I'm living in these, but I'm living in both worlds. I, I can go to the streets and survive, and I can go out here and do my business out here. I'm play devil's advocate again. Well, that we do have in common. I like to stay in the gray, uh, like I always say, um, for people who know, I'm like a grade five nine mama, but um, yeah, I do get that. I do get that, and it's a shame that we still have to talk about black and white, and um, let's mix it up and make it gray. Um, he's like I said, full with the words, but he's real, and and that I like. I do, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm not supposed to, but I do. I I really do. Critics say, yeah, but you're being pimped. You're being pimped Ooh, by the record record executives who will allow you to, to do say. your thug life because it portrays a certain black. I mean, you've heard it, yeah. that if you were just a singer, you wouldn't have the same record contracts you have. Right. 
but because you portray the thug life, the gangster rap, Look they've allowed you to make that money. They've allowed you to push and make you platinum. I beg to differ. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting pimped. That's true. But um, just like how a, how a woman would be, you know what I'm saying? Anybody to be pimped. You know, it's like, it's not that you get pimped. It's how long you get pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because... If you really look at this situation, it is not I who's being pimped. When you look at them white kids with Raiders hats on, it's the white folks getting pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm making their future. I'm writing down their curriculum. Right now, what I write in my album today, when it comes out in two months, that's what white kids is doing. So who really is getting pimped? I'll be, I'll be, I'll, what I'm writing in my raps is what them white kids is going to be saying to their mamas and daddies when they come home. Who is getting pimped? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a high school dropout. You know what I'm saying? As far as my teacher told me when I was in high school, I ain't gonna be You know what I'm saying? I just gotta, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. <laughs> you know, oh, everybody's getting eyes. pimped. Whether you work a nine to five or whether you work for yourself, you're getting pimped by somebody. That's not, the, that's not the crime. The crime is how long you allow yourself to get pimped. You have to come up. Everything is a come up. Everything is a struggle. You start from the bottom, work it to the top. Wow, well, he was overconfident, that's for sure. And I think you have to be somehow to make it in the industry. Um, it's too bad. I, yeah, like I said, it's too bad that he's not longer amongst us. And I do understand that many rappers do have him on a pedestal and that he is an idol. And like I said in some videos, listening to the m music, he may not be the technical the best rapper ever but he did rap from the heart and um he was saying something and yeah thank you for suggesting this interview and like i said it's not the last of tupac but it's the last for me now i have to explore other songs other genres and christmas is coming up and i would love to do some christmas songs so if you have some suggestions maybe he did a christmas song put them in the comments and we do have a community post up where you can leave requests and on sunday i will do a live stream like i always do and for now i'm going to say bye bye and be nice <laughs>